Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement heaven. When I quip that quote, when I say that mantra of mine that I created with the Lord's help, what I'm trying to remind most people is that the world of work is short-lived. And sometimes we must change our profession by carrying our skill sets and our talents elsewhere. And when we make that change, we do have to have people who are around us who we can talk to about different things so that we can check ourselves about how we're handling ourselves. But we can only check ourselves with people who have an understanding of that realm and that world. If you've never been an entrepreneur, if you've never been in business development, if you've never been in a salesman's meeting, if you've never been a sales trainer like me, which is obvious in some of my videos of the past, then you might know, not know how to network at an event without pissing on people. Those who piss on people rarely get work. They also piss enough people off that they get thrown out of an event. If it's time to leave a community, you have that real sense in your soul that I have timed this out, or I just don't want to do this anymore, or I'm just done with this. Sometimes we need a change of pace. Sometimes we need a change of scenery. Sometimes we get a forced change of profession because our companies, our organizations, our school systems just say, we've had enough of this. You didn't deliver what you promised. You haven't written a new musical. You haven't designed a new math course. You're way over timed here. We are tired of having to time you out of our security system at the wrong hours of the day. We can see you're not creating a life. We can tell you're becoming a trophy wife. We absolutely know your husband's a bastard. We don't want that associated with our company. We don't like that he's interfering with your life, and we don't like you here anymore. When we're trying to train our children about real life, we can't do that in a community that is not correct for us. When we're trying to prove that we've done something in the world, we have to be able to prove it with the content, with the portfolio, with the artwork, with the designs. But here's the thing I know about professors in universities from my own wife's study in one. We once made a project for one of her classes about a Harry Potter world. My guess is that that was something that was being touted online by a corporation like Walt Disney World or somebody that a professor was staying abreast of. Because the next thing I knew after my spouse, my late wife, placed in that project for her homework, that all of a sudden out of Walt Disney World came a Harry Potter world in their camp or in their what do we call it, their Epcot Center, and I don't even know because it's been so long since I've been there. I might like to go there sometime, but I'm not a fan of the Florida line. I'm also not a fan of their politics, and it's unlikely that I'll go back to Ohio, even though the area that I drove in was beautiful and marvelous, full of farms. You see, when I was driving in my business vehicle, I was actually collecting information the old-fashioned way. I put together hundreds of business cards of farms and horse farms and cow farms for a project I was working on to support my late mother. But when I kept that in my vehicle, somebody got into those and made a total mess of my organization. So all the cities that I had organized in groups got so monkeyed with that I can't say where they were then. What that was was a total violation of the law that they opened my vehicle and touched anything at all. It actually went missing, and then it came back. You see, monstrous men and ridiculous women like to play like they have rights to open a vehicle. We have people who are stupid about life. We have people who don't get that if I had been able to finish that project, I might be looking at millions of dollars in business. And the reason is that once you have sold someone on your integrity, and once you've been able to prove who you are in terms of your science capabilities or the backing of proof with medical people that has been behind a product that my mom used, late mom used to represent, that we might get a customer or a consumer for life. And that produces mailbox money for me and my family. I know that someone has stolen my business cards while I've been in Champaign, Illinois. I know that someone has taken my technology and turned it into a toy. 
I know that someone has stolen my industrial content as well as my intellectual properties, and I know that men have been shaving themselves up, balding their heads, and bringing out beards, but maybe the Lord has me as a trendsetter, because I did that marvelously over a year ago. But I also know there's monstrous people that'll just change a photo out, steal a brochure, and tout it like it's theirs. And maybe a professor is that stupid about an Indian child or a Mexican child or even American child who tries to tout that their graphic designs and their writing is really theirs. But a true professor can tell the difference between someone's work and someone's theft. And what I'm saying is that the people who have stolen things from me will not benefit from the Lord. They will lose the blessings over time. What I'm sad about with some relationships that I've had briefly is how someone else was able to get in and taint me or taint the beauty of what God was developing between us. And the problem with that is that there's always someone who doesn't know how to handle something and instead of going right back to the person that they're having that awkward moment with, they start talking about it with their girlfriends, they start touting about it with their guy friends, they start throwing it in front of people that they want to make jealous, and then it becomes a total mess. In my life, I've had three uh, women outside of my biological family that have made major impacts on me, possibly four, potentially more if I count a few female bosses who taught me a lot when they shit down my throat when I didn't understand something, and I got it. I had a male boss that did that once to me, but I kind of realized in that moment I went too far, but I was being egged on by a child who they had employed, and I was pissed off they hired him because he was absolutely immoral and a pain in the ass to me and others. But in life, people who own companies can hire their friends' kids. That's true. But usually those kids don't often work out very well. Nepotism is apparently high in a community that is suffering for workers. I was just marvelously told a story or marvelously lied to by a company that sometimes feed me off my paltry money. I was told that by the manager that that was her husband who was running the grill and a kid there was their son and so was another female there. And maybe that's true. And they wanted to say this is a family business and I thought how marvelous for you and how great for that corporation that's national that has had a lot of struggle and literally, was, I was told last year, was going under. They do make a brisk business. But I've also seen companies where employees say to me, people don't want to work anymore, and I sort of agree that. I'm not opposed to working, but I am someone who's always lived by the rule as an adult of I'm going to work smarter and not harder. So I found a way to provide for my family of three, a very growing, fast-growing, hungry young man and my wife and me. And I don't have to explain any more than how our family developed or how it became about or how I did things. But I'm a grandfather now. And I don't have to have some fucking 20-year-old trying to tell me how to live my life. I'm a mere 53. Most men and women at our age sort of feel that. But I am not opposed to learning today. I'm not opposed to working today. But people presume that. They presume that because I'm walking around, I'm not working. That's not true. When I used to drive around in my fully paid for, fully licensed, by business name vehicle that the law enforcement illegally stole from me, they didn't have the right to take it, it wasn't involved in any crime, they didn't have the right to impound it, but they did it anyway, and they stole my drives. I actually watched the female officer take my computer drives in the bag it was in, in my car, out of the car itself, and take it to her vehicle. And I wondered why. You see, the foolishness of her was thinking she had the right to touch something that was computers, and she didn't. I wasn't being embarrassed or humiliated for that reason. The man Stiles, who stole the photograph of one of my girls, was an officer. Another foreign sheriff tried to tell me that I couldn't wear certain underpants because of his belief about the world. Thankfully, a woman who was rather heavy set did not have an opposition for me keeping a prothesis with me. And that's a marvelous story that's nobody's business. But those who listen in, those who pay attention, those that mock me can go to hell. Because how dare you fucking tell me that I can't be a grandfather today?
How dare you fucking tell me that I couldn't have been a father in any way? And how you dare you fucking believe that you had the right to, to, to put me to sleep and shave my fucking body? Because here's what I'm going to tell you. What you're setting yourself up for is doing a hell of a lot more harm to you, your family, your community, your ethnic group, and your nation of origin today.